You are now tuned in to the Storm Tracker Podcast. It's the Storm Tracker Podcast. I'm Marcus Benjamin, representing for CanesCounty.com, part of the Rivals Network. And I'm joined today by Bailey, and she is going, she actually runs the Houston Rivals website called Cougars Den. And of course, the Houston Cougars will take on the Miami Hurricanes in the first round of the Sweet 16. So I decided to bring her on so we can kind of talk about the game and and uh, just kind of preview this Sweet 16 matchup. Miami, of course, comes in at, as the underdog, uh, a seven-point underdog. I don't know if you saw that, Bailey. Uh, yeah, yeah. Seven-point underdog to Houston. And I think it's going to be a little bit closer than the experts think. Because Miami and Houston, to me, very similar teams, very similar style of play. They play with defense, they can play fast, and they kind of beat you with your uh, quickness and, 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 and ability. So just kind of looking at this game, when you saw the matchup, you know, what, what were your first thoughts? And how do you think this game will uh, essentially kind of play out? Um, my first thoughts were, um, you know, Miami is a good team and, um, aren't they like the last standing in their conference? They are, they are, they are holding the banner for the ACC. Yeah. So I figure, you know, because of that, they're probably going to play harder, play Houston harder. And, um, yeah, basically what you said, I feel like they, they're very similar teams, um, they both kind of play when they start the game, they kind of play the same and they both have um, some of the top guards in the nation. I saw Isaiah Wong. Um, is that, that's how you say his name. Yeah. yeah. Um, hey, and so uh, I just, I overall think like the game's going to play out close. I think Houston will get the win in the end, but I feel like it's not going to be by a long shot. And I only say that because Houston does have, a couple of players that can sew up the game. And that's how coach Sampson coaches. Um, that's his style. And he's just kind of the guy, like if you're not making moves, you're not playing. So he's, he's going to bring the best dudes on the court. Definitely. So let's, let's talk injuries because Houston has been going through some injuries. Uh, Miami has been going through some injuries as well. Norchad or Mir was questionable for that first first game but his performance was anything but questionable he he came through as his norchad or mere self with plenty of rebounds plenty of grit plenty of energy as he always does doesn't seem injured at all with that sprained ankle he's going to be a hundred percent for this game against houston but the only other injury to be concerned about for miami hurricanes fans is wooga poplar he took a, a nasty fall in the last game against indiana so he's kind of dealing with some back soreness. He's questionable to to start for uh, in the game against Houston. My guess is that he's going to play. Uh, I talked to him, or like we as press kind of spoke to him right after they got off the bus at Miami, and he said he was going to play. But we spoke to Coach L, and he's he's hopeful that Wilga Poplar will play. Other than that, Miami's injury pl- injury free. What can you tell me about Houston's starting lineup? Um, the only problem with injuries that could, you know, mess Houston up is Marcus Sasser. Um, he has – he played last the last game. Um, I want to say he put up like 30 points. Um, but in the AAC tournament, um, the championship game, he ended up not playing. And uh, he has a growing injury. So that's the only thing that everybody's worried about because he is their leading scorer and um, he was the AAC player of the year and he's um, an all American. And so, um, yeah, but he said on Tuesday before the team left that he will be playing. He 
also mentioned he doesn't feel like he's at 100%. So we'll kind of just see how um, Coach Sampson works around that. But he said that he's about 90%. He has been working out, lifting weights, and stretching. So we'll just kind of see how it plays out. If he plays, I'm sure, like, everything will go well. But if he doesn't play, that could be an issue for Houston just because he's their leading guy that's putting up all the points. So, I mean, you could have Jamal Shedd that um, comes in and helps. But, yes, um, the only player that really has – an injury issue is Marcus Sazer. Awesome. Once again, I'm joined by Bailey Sheffield from CougarsDen.com, part of the Rivals Network. I just wanted to ask you, are you from Houston originally? No, I'm from Dallas, Texas. Um, oh. I ended up going to school at Houston. Um, to, oh, okay. Yeah, I was a cheerleader there. And so as I was in the journalism program, I ended up interning with the Cougars Den, and that's kind of how... I ended up with them. Okay, nice, nice. And I do see you're rocking the uh, the Lakers purple and gold there. I, I know gotta put on for LeBron, you know. For LeBron, okay, okay. Uh, mixed feelings about LeBron uh, from the you know the camp down here in Miami. Some people, you know, like him. Some people don't. Obviously, he helped us, you know, win two championships. Uh, but the way he exited, a lot of people don't kind of like the way that in which he exited not giving any props to the fans here in Miami who kind of stood by him um in a time where you know kind of the country hated him so th there's mixed feelings about LeBron James um down here in South Florida but um back back to the game at hand sweet 16 Miami versus Houston like, let's talk about uh, some matchups here. Obviously, Norchad Olmir is, is the guy in the middle. He's our rebounding monster. Um, and I think one of the keys to this game is him staying out of foul trouble. Mm -hmm. So for Houston, who is that guy that could potentially put him into foul trouble down low? I'd have to say it could be Jairus Walker or it could be Marcus Shit. Um, just because they're, they're playing style, especially Jairus Walker. Um, he's a defensive guy. He's, um, a power forward and he's kind of got that NBA edge already to just be a freshman. So I'm pretty sure he could put him in foul trouble. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, definitely, I think that is kind of one of the keys for this game. Norchad Army has done a great job of staying out of foul trouble in this tournament and generally throughout the season. I think there was only maybe maybe two, two and a half games where he was in foul trouble, but would definitely, well, the Hurricanes fans will definitely need his presence on, on, on the court if Miami has any shot at this one. Now, Houston has a potential to be going to the Final Four, uh, of course, with them being a number one seed, and that Final Four is in Houston. Do you think there's any any pressure on that team to really to make it to Houston, being that that Final Four is in their hometown? I think um... – for the Cougars, there's a lot just for the Final Four being in Houston. I think there is a whole lot of pressure on them, um, especially Coach Sampson. You know, Houston had the five slam jamma. And so, you know, everybody talks about that. Everybody brings it up, especially on campus. They still, they still talk about that, huh? Yeah, they still bring it up. Um, <laughs> and we there's still players from that team that, that comes to the games. Really? And so – yeah, and so, um, yeah, and the fans are really um, pushing it. They're hoping that Houston does well. I think there's a lot on the line for them. Um, and, you know, the city is just very crazy about this team. So they're really hoping. You know, there's already fans buying Final Four tickets because they're wow. hoping that Houston goes, you know, and the tickets are expensive. But, um yeah, so I just feel like there's a lot of pressure. There's 
there's a lot of um, speculation around this team on with every news source in Houston. I've never seen it like this before. And um, so, yeah. Spe- speculation, um, if you can kind of expand on 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 what particular speculation it, you, you see. Um, they're, you know, they're just wondering if this team can do it. They're wondering if this team is the best that um, Coach Samson has had at Houston. You know, every for the like the last three, four years, Houston has been making it to the Sweet 16, the Elite Eight. And so um, everybody's just wondering, can this team actually do it? Because this is the most talent that, you know, Houston has had on, on, with one team. You know, you got um, Marcus Sasser, Jamal Shea, you have Ramon Walker, you have Jarris Walker, you have. Um, Terrence Arsenal, who's also a freshman and can come off the bench. So it's just like, if this team is that good, everybody feels like they should be good enough to make it to the final four and put on for Houston, put on for Texas as a whole. Um, That's really the biggest thing that everybody's looking at, especially here in Texas is can a Texas team win? Can a Texas team go to the final four? Are we able to prove that we're good enough? Is the Big 12 able to prove that they're good enough? You know, so that's kind of what's being said. That's kind of what's going around. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, interesting. Interesting that, you know, two states that are known for football are now in the spotlight for basketball. I know down here, there's always this conversation is Miami now a basketball school, especially with the women's team also making it to the Sweet 16. I believe this is the first time in in its history that both the men's and women's teams are in the Sweet 16 together. So there's kind of an opposite narrative going on down here in South Florida. I think think, uh, most of Hurricanes fans are just happy to be in the conversation, happy to be in there Mm. because the football team by – the the hurricanes fan standards not relevant or maybe you know, by, by national standards not relevant and you know what at houston it's kind of like that with our football team as well um even though they had like you know some players like nathaniel dale who's like you know that guy but ever since um coach herman tom herman left in 2016 i want to say you know at Nobody has hope in the football team. They're already dogging Dana Hogerson. So it's kind of the same thing. They're like, we're a basketball team now. We don't really do football. Um, It went from, it's so funny because it went from the arena with basketball having nobody. I mean, like maybe 20 fans to now every time it's sold out. And it's not as many fans at the football game. So, yeah, that's kind of the same thing with Miami, at least this season. Uh, the the <clears throat> the arena at Miami has been filled up pretty much all season compared to the capacity at Miami games. Well, it started out right, which it always starts out, you know, full. And then towards the end of the season, naturally, based on the record, there weren't a lot of fans. So. So, yeah, I think Miami is really embracing the fact that the basketball programs are doing well. Um, And now that we're on that, we were on the subject of football. We did kind of get one of your uh, coordinators, uh, Shannon Dawson, over over to Miami. So uh, I know the, the, the consensus down here about him so far has been great. Um, like he's bringing in basically a spread offense uh, that better fits our quarterback here, Tyler Van Dyke. Um, what's your opinion about him and maybe maybe that offense or what has been the fans' response to Shannon Dawson when he was at Houston? Sorry to kind of this random question, but, you know, I thought about it. <laughs> no, um – Fans really didn't have a problem with him. Um, they thought that he ran the offense pretty, you know, all right. Um, plus, uh, for Houston, the offense in football wasn't really an issue. It was more of the defense. Even though 
the defensive coordinator, Doug Belk, is really good at his game. Alabama has tried to bring him in. Um, there wasn't really an issue with Dawson. It was just more on the defensive side. And um, a lot of fans did not want to see him go. It was um, a lot of talk, a lot of tweets. But, you know, um, it was, I guess, just what the best for him, um, especially since, I mean, Houston's going to the Big 12, but at the moment they were not in the powerhouse five group. And so yeah. um, we're kind of used to having to lose coaches that are beneficial to us due to that reason. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. Um, uh, what one question I did want to ask as far as injuries concerned to switch back to basketball was Jamal Shedd. He was dealing with like a knee injury or a knee issue. Um, is is does he have a knee issue at all, or is he or is he good to go? He's good to go. He hasn't really talked about it. Um, there hasn't been much said about his knee issue. Um, I'm pretty sure that he's just going to get pulled back on minutes. Um, Cause like I said, uh, there are people for Houston that can come off the bench. So if it does propose to be a problem, I don't think with him being out that it would be super bad. Um, but he's so far from what <laughs> I've heard from press conferences and stuff, he's good to go. So Sound good, sound good. So it should be an exciting game tomorrow night in Kansas City. Um, I'm assuming you you are not in in Kansas City uh, for no. the game. Neither am I, unfortunately. Uh, I I will likely though be in Houston uh, if Miami makes it to the Final Four. So maybe we'll we'll touch base then. But um, just lastly here, how do you how do you how do you do you think? this game ultimately kind of plays out here <coughs> excuse me i i think uh i think whoever starts off the fastest here will have an edge uh it's just like uh the game the women's game i don't know if you watched it the women the miami women's game against indiana that's a game that they that they led basically from wire to wire and I, I, I could see this being a back and forth game. However, I think the team that starts out the fastest first will have the edge. And I don't think the other team will have enough to kind of overcome, let's say, a 10 to 12 point lead just because both teams are just very efficient offensively. What say you? Um, actually, that was exactly what I was going to say as well, is whoever starts off the strongest, um, like you said, the fastest, I feel like it's going to win the game. Um, because I just feel like by the second half, uh, it's just too late, too hard for whoever is losing to come back. Because um, once again, I like Miami has sharpshooters as well. So I just feel like it's whoever starts off the strongest, whoever gets the lead is going to win the game. Yeah, absolutely. I do think it's going to be a close game. Sounds like you think it's going to be a close game as well. Uh, seven point favorites, I think is, is a lot. Uh, I, I say, take the points. Uh, if, if you're a betting person, um, I actually did visit Houston um, earlier this, well, last year for the, <coughs> excuse me, for the, uh, Miami versus Texas A&M game. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. So I, I actually had a chance to visit a Turkey leg hut. Uh, yeah, that's spot. Yeah. Which was really nice. Had a good, a good time out there. Um, so hopefully I'll get to go back there and get me another Turkey leg, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll, kind of, we'll kind of see, we'll see what happens, but um, thanks for joining me again. Thanks um, for having me. Bailey, uh, what is uh, your your Twitter handle, and where where can they find you, or or any any other platforms that you have? Um, my Twitter handle is Bailey Chef, so B A I L E I G H S H E F F, um, and my Instagram is Bailey Chef at one. But if you want to keep up with sports or Houston, it's best to follow me on Twitter. So. Okay, will do. Thanks again for joining me on the Storm Tracker podcast. Enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy the game. We'll see how it turns out.
Thanks.